Cardi B was listening to WAP on live, I think, and her kid came in and she immediately turned it off. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, you can't hear that. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, oh, like, you know, how is it okay for our kids to have to hear this shit? And you don't even want your own kid hearing it, which to me sounded insane because it's like, listen, people make porn. Exactly. It's not for kids. This is an understanding that they make porn. It's for adults. You don't show little kids it. That's it. WAP is not porn, but it's certainly, you know, it's edited on the radio for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you're not supposed to play, you know, the same reason I grew up listening to NWA. It's like if I had a fucking three year old, I probably wouldn't want to listen to him. I wouldn't want him listening to Easy E talking about shooting people and shit, you know? Yeah. Well, how I feel about that is them your kids. So, you know, if you don't want your kids listening to that, don't let them listen to that. You know what I'm saying? But it's like at the end of the day, they still going to get out here and they going to hear it. So mm. well, why not hear it from you <laughs> than hearing it when they with somebody else? Then they come back home like, get a bucket and a mop. Then you're like, what the fuck? Like, hold on, where you learn that at? I told you you can't listen to that. Yeah. But I had friends growing up, they was like, um, I'll be playing something. They'd be like, "Oh, my mom don't let me listen to that." Mm. You know, I'll turn it off. Like I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? But the, it's just about how you were raised. Like if you scared of your peoples, which is good when you scared of your mom because she can really, you know, even even when you out of her sight, you still remember what she would do to you if she saw you doing what you're doing. So some people, when they are away from their parents, they'll be like, "You know, I can't listen to that. You got to turn that off." You know? Right. No, yeah, I've thought about that a lot because my girl is very much like, oh, like, you know, once once she can speak, I don't want her listening to, I don't want to play this type of music around her and stuff. And I feel it, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, isn't it kind of pointless because it's mm-hmm. only a matter of time right. until she's going to be hit over the head with this all the time. Exactly. And, but it's also kind of like there is a period in their life where you're just not going to be able to explain that the baby says fuck but you're five years old, so you can't say fuck. But, you know, basically one day you're going to be able to say fuck. You just have to make sure you don't say it in front of your teacher. Yeah. It's kind of like convoluted. At the end of the day, it's about how you're raised. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I was always like, I had manners like a motherfucker when I was younger. Like, I didn't cuss around my teachers and other adults and stuff. Like, I can cuss around my mama. Like, I would say stuff like, you know, singing a song. She let me sing a song and say cussing words. Like, mm. other than that, like, I can't just be like, bitch, you got me fucked up. Like, you know, any any time of the day yeah it was sometimes my mom it's it all goes back to how comfortable you make your children around you like if 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 your kids grew up like like me i grew up where i could tell my parents anything like like first time having sex i can talk talk about that you weren't scared to tell your mom about it that no. wasn't like i'm hiding this yeah. like for me as a kid i'm hooking up with girls i'm fingering some girl when i'm 14 <laughs> i'm i would never have told my mom no like know? that's the best to have that relationship where you can talk about that that's where you save yourself because your parents been through that before so they can tell you how this gonna end up that's how my mom used to be she like just straight up cutting to me like yeah you're gonna get a disease <laughs> this gonna happen if you if you do this like so you know, it was just already planted in my head. Like, yeah, right. let me move right because this will happen. You know, I worry less even about the swearing so much as like the ideas or like the themes. Like, you know, one time, like, because now I got a kid, I'm sitting there listening to music and I'm thinking about what they're actually saying. Mm-hmm. And I'm hearing Rio the Young OG say something about beating his bitch up. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> like, oh my God, like, I wouldn't, it would be so hard for me to explain to my kid that he's joking, yeah. I guess. Uh, it would be really hard for me to explain that. So that in itself is like he, he's fucking around, but it's like there's nothing that would suggest to a young kid that he's fucking yeah. around. Like, how are they going to know? Right. You know, the show. Yeah, I don't know. But OK, let's get back on track. You so you you start putting music out and it's almost like immediately viral. Wait, can we get a fan? Because I'm hot as hell. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I was kind of thinking that, too. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, you know, because the weather out here is fucked. A couple of days ago, it was so goddamn hot. And then today it's just freezing. But then for some reason here, it's super hot. Um, okay, you put your music out, it starts kind of blowing up right away, which is interesting because a lot of times it takes people like a really long time to have a song do well, never mind their, their first song going viral. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you think it was that sort of made that happen for you? I feel like because it was organic, like, you know, like it just, it wasn't forced. I didn't come into the music industry like, oh, I, I've been going going through coaching, I've been wanting to do this my whole life. Like, no, it was just something, I'm just talking about my life. It's just, even when people be like, oh, you got some hard ass bars, like even me and Trina, she telling me my shit's so cold and all this, I'm like, wow, I just be saying shit, you know? Mm. I just be talking about my life. You yeah, just, you're just talking, you have no idea. Until people start telling you how good you are or how bad you are, then you don't really know what yeah. what other people are gonna perceive this shit as, right? Mm-hmm. 
That's interesting. Yeah, I feel like when you kind of came out, it's like you had a little bit of that like Chief Keef type energy where it's mm. like everybody just sat back and like couldn't believe Chief Keef when they first saw him because it's like how the fuck is he this raw right. and this from the streets and he's making songs that are this big and he's blowing up and like you know there's like, something that was so raw but but also good musically that just kind of made everybody unable to look away I feel like yeah. you had a little bit of that effect for sure I definitely was listening to Chief Keef growing up mm. that was one of my favorite rappers Definitely. So, okay, how, how did you even start getting beats in the beginning? Or how did you actually go about the process of making music? You just had a microphone? Beats? Nah. Um, remember I told you I was doing the freestyles, so, right. like, I already had fans. Mind you, I'm in Detroit, so people used to be, like, um, talking to RJ Lamont about me. Like, anybody that went around, they said they heard my name before, and I'm like, how? What the fuck? Like, you know, I didn't, I don't understand that because it's like, I'm not out here. I don't have no music out here. I don't got nothing going on, but y'all know me, you mm -hmm. know? That's weird. But um, how I got producers, RJ Lamont was my first producer, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was my first producer. And we just had a relationship. Like, we was just, it was like he was my big cousin type of relationship. Like, this nigga gave me his fucking college car <laughs> when really? I was younger. Yes, and I used to be driving it around. <laughs> she the That's a lot of shit. trust, man. I would be okay, terrified to give like, a young girl a car. Man, That's my a... manager at the time was so mad. Like, he was like, don't give her that car. And then I'd go back over there, and he'd just let me take it. You right. know? But RJ Lamont, we had a relationship and stuff, so it was it was different. Um, uh, John Boy, that was one of my producers. Hell of a, we got a close relationship also. So, and that he's really big in Detroit as a producer. Mm. So, them was like my early, you know, uh, who else was it? Um, Ant Beats. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of them? No. Yeah. Ant Beats and stuff. But wait, you said you had a manager. When did that come into place? And, and how did that happen? And when did you realize you needed that? Well, my manager came into place. How did he come into place? Oh, um, I knew this boy. Full of boy, <laughs> sounds like you're really disrespecting whoever this guy is. I know this boy <laughs> for a minute, and he was a photographer. Uh -huh. But when we first talked, um, he was with GT, and that's one of the rappers that I looked up to in the city. Even back then? Even back then. Because somebody so, like me, I'm just finding out about GT in like the last year, so yeah, that's pretty so dope. Yeah, he been, you know, out in, on the scene in Detroit. Like, we've been fucking with him for a long time, so it's like, okay, he FaceTimed me. I think he, yeah, he FaceTimed me either in a car or in the studio with GT, and they're like, yeah, put up to the studio, da da da. Mind you, it's late as hell. I had school the next day, and I never snuck out the house before. Why I sneak the fuck out the house? Because <laughs> I stayed like right there where the studio was at. Like it was like probably like two minutes away from my house. Uh -huh. So, snuck out, got in the car with these niggas, went to the studio, and after that, like, I really had a relationship with everybody, and they just wanted me to get in the studio. Like, we was in the studio till like, 3 o'clock in the morning. Snuck back in the house, but mind you, my mama, she was out. She was in the streets and shit, so she she was asleep when I got she there. She was even drunk there. as hell. When no, I was, was there. When, when was I was there. sneaking out the house, there was no chance in hell that my mom was also just going to be outside the house. My mama, like, she, any little noise, if she knocked out snoring, you make a little noise, she going to wake up. Really? So I had to, like, do some super spy gadget type shit and just... Get uh -huh. the fuck out of there. But that's what set my shit off for real. Like, that's my first time going to the studio, recording anything, meeting rappers, you know, all of that. The whole everything that night. How was it overall, though? Was that all of a sudden you were just way more motivated to do this? Definitely way more motivated. But that's where I met my manager. That's where I was getting it. Mm. That's where I met my manager at the time. Uh, yeah, he was there. That's where they took me to his studio. Mm. And yeah, that's he just like, you got that shit. Like, you need to work. Did you feel like being around all these rappers and stuff? Did you feel like there was an extent where people were trying to sign you? Did you feel like people were maybe having bad intentions for you or, or wanting to, I don't know, get involved in your career or whatever? This might be like L.A. me mm -hmm. speaking because that's what happens in L.A. If there's like a talented artist, you just have all these fucking just vultures just all Definitely. over them. Um, but when I was younger, I didn't know nothing about that. I didn't know mm. nothing about the business side. I didn't know nothing about making money from music. Didn't mm. know nothing about none of this. So it really fucked me up, you know? Like, the first things you go through, and it's like, I was so loyal to my manager. Like, I loved him. I thought we was going to, you know, get rich as fuck together when I did start seeing a little money from me, you know? 
and then finding out things, you know, it really fucks you up. Like, you know, it kind of intimidated me with the music shit. I barely wanted to go to the studio. I barely wanted to make music anymore. Like, I just lost my passion for it because it's like it's motherfuckers that really want to just have you around to make money off of you and not support you or anything that you, you know, I had real life problems. Like, you know, mind you, I told you he passed away when my career first, like, was jumping off and shit. So it's like, I don't know, like that nigga, no, I feel you though. But that that's why honestly, like I've had this conversation with a lot of people in the music business, but you gotta do good business. Because mm -hmm. if you are out of here screwing people, I mean It's like I really just did not understand why, because it's like it was so many people around him. He would take me places and people would be like, Oh, you know, I can manage you, I can get you on this, I can get you on that. And I'm like, nah, you feel me? I got a manager. Like I used to get mad at people for saying shit to me. Like people was trying to warn me. Like his I mean, I didn't say that. But people that was around was trying to warn me, like, you know you you should be on this site and you can get money for this and that and none of that. I'm like, nah, I'm pretty sure it's already set up. You know, just trusting him in everything, like not even asking him, like, so what about this? Or, you know, like, oh I just heard this. Is this true? You know, none of that because mm. I was just rocking with him and I thought he was rocking with me. You're like that. young and you want to trust people and you feel like you could just take a step back mm. in reality. Like you handle the you business know. side, I'm going to just rap. That's what I was thinking. I just wanted to make music. Right. Definitely. So do you feel like that kind of slowed your career up at some point? It definitely slowed my career up because, you know, having to fire them, leaving, anything like that, you got to get the team back up because that's when I know about the business shit. Once I left, I'm like, okay, now I got to get on this business shit. I can't let nobody fucking play with me. Right. Then my um, producer I was working with at the time, Pooh Beats, he um, introduced me to my next manager after that. And everything was just so perfect. Like, it was just a fucking dream come true. But things that's too perfect don't be what it seemed. It don't be, you know, it's, it's always something to right. it. How did that one not work out? Um, I feel like, like it was communication. Out. Really? That didn't really work too much. Not communication on my end, but, you know, I didn't know a lot of things that was going on at the, at the time. That's the only thing that, you know, I would say about that relationship. But I still love all of them. Like, I, I really do love them, but it's just like, you know, things happen. It's crazy because it just occurs to me that when you have a new artist, you could either, if you're a, you know, a, a manager or if you're another artist, or you're, if you're trying to make it your business to sign young artists, it's like you could so easily have the biggest, most positive effect on their career or the most negative it's effect the most, on their yeah. career. Mm -hmm. And I hate when I see people take advantage of that and, mm -hmm. and abuse that privilege. Yeah. And it's kind of corny because I already mentioned him. But when I was talking to Rio recently, mm -hmm. he said he's talking about PZ and how when he first met with PZ, PZ showed him a fucking uh, tune core check and showed him like how he was going to people's spots and like linking up with them and doing features and stuff and mm -hmm. just gave him the whole game. Mm -hmm. And that right there is like, you know, it almost brought a tear to my eye, yeah, honestly, listening right. to him say that, because I'm like, this motherfucker didn't have to, and he put you on the whole game and turned you into an entrepreneur. And that's just such a beautiful thing to me. And Definitely. when I see the opposite of that, which is to, you know, maybe you're on okay terms with some of them, but it sounds like kind of you had sort of an opposite uh, experience. And I just think that's like the, the saddest thing. 